Nicole, this is for you. When we were at leadership in January, the Journey crew used bubble machines, and I got the idea, well, if they could use bubbles, couldn't we put some of our splashes in it? So I got one of the bubble machines, and now I'm trying it to do a background with bubbles. It takes a little while to get your bubbles started, and it will give you bubbles and it will give you splatters. Then these can be used for the backgrounds. This is the card that I'm going to show you today in our video. Now the background on this one is the one that we did outside earlier. Let me show you some of the other pieces that I did using that technique. The very first one I did was this one because I did it in a box in the house. But as you can see, it gave me streaks and I didn't like that. So then I decided, oh, there had to be a way to do this outside when the wind isn't blowing. And so Dick put up a rope for me outside on our carport and I simply took some 12 by 12 cardstock because I found that size worked better. And I just hung it up using some of our clothespins. And as you can see, it gave me a lot of different shapes. It gave me splatters, but it also gave me bubbles. I hung several pieces up because I just kept going back and forth with my bubble machine. So you can see here, there are a lot more bubbles. I was getting better at doing this, and really it is a lot of fun. So if you have children or grandchildren, they may enjoy doing this sort of thing. What I used was our Blue Lagoon Splash, and I simply put some in a jar and mixed it with the bubbles that actually come in the bubble gun, okay? And then you don't want to leave the bubbles in here with the splash in it when you're finished. You're going to want to put it back into your jar and save it for next time. But this was a lot of fun to do. The other card stocks that I used were lemongrass, and I used it for the seagrass, the orange cream cycle, and I also used it for grass. And then my two layers are the beach ball blue and our light blue pool play. So these are the card stocks that I used. Then what I've done is I've taken a piece of white and on it, I'm going to stamp my fish. Now this little fish comes in the rainbow fish set. It's called Rainbow Bubbles. And it's this set right here. And here is actually the stamp set minus my bubbles. And then I also use some of the bubbles in this set. Now this is a set that's coming out in the next catalog, the next mini, which is uh, April 1st. Besides that, I also took one of the stamp sets, punny stuff that's right now in our current mini, and I took the bubble, little bubble one here, and I cut off You Blow Me Away because I want to use that as my words. This is that particular stamp set. It's cute, the kids love it. These are fun things to give your children in their lunch boxes. And then the other stamp set that I used was this one, and it is the seagrass. The thing that's nice about this set is that it comes with dies, so you can buy both the stamp and the dies to cut your grass out, which is really an added good thing to me. All right, and then I inked up my grass, and I inked up my words, and on my white, I put my words, because I'm gonna cut those out. And then I used my orange, my cream cycle, and my light green, and I stamp my seagrass. And then with these, I can cut these out using our, the dies. And when you do, this is what you have. Now, with my fish, how I wanted to color him was I wanted to use our reinkers. And so I took sweet pear, bubble gum and cool pool and I put them on an old block that I have along with a little bit of our fusion blender. 
Now, very honestly, you don't need a lot of any of it because our fish isn't really that big. And then what I did is I used one of our uh, blender pens or blender brushes. When you use the blender brushes, you want to make sure you mark them. This brush says water on it, so I know that I use this with my watercolor pencils. This one doesn't have anything on it, so I know that I use it with my blender solution. You do not want to mix the two. That is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do simply is pick up a little bit of my blender, and I'm going to go over to my sweet pear, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of my sweet pear. And then simply what I'm going to do is pretend I'm a little kid, which really, having taught first and second grades for so many years, I, I like to do. I'm just going to scribble. So I just pick up some of my blender, some of my ink, and I'm simply going to scribble on him. Nothing hard about it. Kids would love to do this. Just anywhere I want some of him. Now I can always go back and change him later. So then what I'm going to do is pick up more of my blender solution and I'm going to go in with just a little bit of my cool pool. I don't want a lot because that is real dark. So I want to make sure I get a good amount of my blender solution. And oh, let's see, I think I want some up here, some there. It's just really a matter of what you want because you can go and add other colors over it if you would like to. But having grown up in Michigan, I know they have a fish called the bluegill. I'm not real sure what he looks like, but I know they have them in Lake Michigan. Okay, so now what I want is a little bit of my bubble gum. Now this will dry a little lighter than it is right now as I'm coloring them in. So I really don't have to worry about it too much. Okay, I think I better get a little more blue or the boys in Michigan will let Aunt Jane know she didn't have quite enough blue. Now I will let him dry and then I will go ahead and I will cut him out so that you won't see outside of my lines. And when I do do that, you will see a fish that looks similar to this. Now he will lighten up a lot and so it will be fine. This one here is one that I did and I, I did an experiment with this one. Richard, our president said, put your a glaze on here which is what I did, my journey glaze, I put it on, I spread it out with a knife, and then I took a heat gun, and I took my heat gun and I went over the, the main part and the fins of my fish. And when I did, I know it's hard to see them there, but they bubble like. And when they sink back down and dry, it looks like scales. So this is the one I'm gonna use today on the card. The other one that I showed you earlier with a finished card, on this one, what I did is I put my glaze all over him and then I sprinkled on a little bit of the sparkle cuts to make him look more like, more like uh, scales. So it's either way, and I like both of them, so this is the one we're gonna use today because he has to dry here. Now, once I've cut out my words, which I've done here, I know that it's gonna be going on a background that is more white and so what I want to do is I want to make sure he's going to show up. So I'm simply taking my ink pad, my black licorice, and I'm going over the edges of him because then I know he's going to show up on my background. So I'm going to lay those two aside now. Now I have those cut out. But remember, I need a base card. And the thing that I like about our paper cutter is that not only can you cut using the green blade, but you can also score using the orange blade. So now this one I need to cut because he's my second layer. So I'm going to cut him out using my green blade so that I have him ready. And now I've already cut my base card to 11 and a half by four and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is line him up at the five and a half inch mark 
and I am simply using my orange and I am scoring him so that when I pull him out, I can now fold him right in half and I'm ready to go. Now the next thing that I have to do is decide, okay, on my 12 by 12 paper, which bubbles do I want? So I'm taking a big one and I think maybe, oh, this section here looks like it has quite a few bubbles. So I'm gonna put it in and see when I line it up at five and a half, oh, let's see, that's not quite where I want him. So let's do this way. Um, you see, this is the thing that's fun about doing this particular technique is that you can go ahead and decide which part of your cardstock you want. So, let's see, do I want that side? or I think I want this one here. Well, that's gonna mean that I'm gonna cut him at five and a half, because then I'm gonna trim this part down. So I've cut him at five and a half long and now I'm going to make him at, th uh, let's see, let's turn him this way, and make him at five and a fourth. And then the only piece I'm losing is this little strip over here, and I can use it for anything later on, on another card. So now I have him cut at five and a quarter. So now I need to cut him so that he will measure four. Hmm. I think I want to turn it this way. Because then I have the bigger bubbles over here. So now I have the piece that I want. So I can put my fish here and I've got my bubbles up in here. But I want more bubbles. So I'm taking the little bubble stamp from the rainbow fish set and I am going to stamp on some bubbles. Let's see, if I put him right here, then I want some bubbles up here. And remember, with any of your stamps, when you're making your background, you can always go off your cardstock. It will not make any difference. It just simply adds the little detail that you want added. And of course, I don't know how many fish are in the water right now, but we're gonna say there are quite a few because I like the bubbles. So there are my bubbles now. So now I'm ready to totally assemble my card. So I'm gonna take my white and my two blues. And oh dear, I cut my white too big yet, okay. Paper trimmer. Okay, cut this one down to three and three fourths. So I was about a quarter too big on each side. So now I've cut him down and he will fit right there. Now, what I'm using for my adhesive is my tape, white liner tape. This will stick very well and it's very strong and it's easy to use. The thing I like about it is that it rips very easy. So you don't have to worry about that using scissors. You can just go ahead and use your fingers. And then I take my bloom tool, which is my go-to tool for a lot of things, but for putting my tape down, I just make sure it's down good, and then it will lift right up my backing by using my bloom tool. And then I need to put my paper onto my blue. And then turn it over, put my tape on it, and put it on my base card. 
Now my backgrounds here, I'm doing them flat because I'm going to pop up my fish and my words along with my seagrass. So I'm just um, wanting this part to be flat because really the part I really want to shine is going to be my fish and my background and it will shine with my fish on it. So now there's my base card put together. I'm going to turn my fish over, turn my words over, and both of my seagrasses, and go ahead and put on my foam squares. One foam square on each of my seagrasses and my words. And then on my fish, I'm going to put two on the body part. But then what I like about my big foam squares is I can cut them any size I want. So I'm cutting one in half to use for his tail. So the first thing I'm going to put on my card now is going to be my rainbow fish. And I want him down here by my bubbles. And I want my words up here, you blow me away. And then my seagrass down on the bottom. And I'm going to overlap my two little seagrasses. And there it is. The rainbow fish stamp set. You blow me away. So here's this one, and here's a couple others that I've done. This one, of course, uses the sparkle cuts. And this one also uses sparkle cuts. So really, you can do them in any way you want to. But the background paper, using a bubble machine, is really a lot of fun to do. One other thing that I want to show you all is the special going on right now with Fun Stampers. If you join my team, from now to the end of February, you can get the code for taking $50 off of your starter kit. The starter kit Platinum retails for $199.99. Its value is over $440, but with the $50 coupon code, you can get it for $149.99. The advantage of the Platinum machine, it's our biggest machine, and it will use all of our steel ruled big dies as well as all the smaller dies. The Amaze Starter Kit normally sells for $149.99. Its value is over $300. It's a $50 off value, so you would get it for $99.99. This is the smaller die cut machine. It will cut our small dies and it will cut our small steel rule dies, but it will not cut the big steel rule dies. So both of these kits are an amazing offer right now. Our code is capital letters JMWJB and then the number 50 for $50. If you're interested, you can go to my website at www.funstampersjourney.com slash angelhugs. And there you can join. If you join yet this month, Besides one of your $50 off starter kits, you also will receive a pack of three journey labels. And these journey labels will fit nicely on our storage containers or anywhere you want to put them. But they're nice on our storage containers because you can write in here what's in your container. So you would get a package of three. Now these do not come out until our big catalog, which goes live July 1. But at that time, then you would get a pack of three. Besides that, and the $50 off, there is a new stamp set coming out, and it's called Bird Melody. These are pictures here done up in a card here and the picture here of one of the birds. This was a set that Richard, our president, designed, and the neat thing about it is that he went online and let the coaches know, and we could go on and make suggestions. This is the complete stamp set here. As you can see, it has some musical notes for our little bird. It also says enjoy retirement, birthday melody, happy anniversary, and with sympathy. 
So these little birds can be used for anything, and the words could be used for any card you wanted to make. So these are the new specials right now till the end of February, and I'd love to have you join my team. If you do join my team, I will send you a welcome card and a welcome gift. So this is the special till the end of February. Have a great day and enjoy.